He is Sean Ford, the superintendent of the Purchase Line School District. Sean, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. It's good to have you with us. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. I feel like I'm doing exit interviews. I've had a whole bunch of school interviews here the last couple of days, and it's the end of the school year, uh, a time when you get to sit back a little bit and reflect, but you can't do it too long because you got so much work to do ahead in the summer. And, well, I guess your school board agenda last night sort of proved that, didn't it? Yes, um, we have a long agenda in June. Now we don't, we don't, we don't have a meeting in July, um, so we we try to, you know, we try to get everything covered in June. But June's always it's from this is what twenty years in the admin for me, and, and June's always your busiest month. So um, it, it's just a busy time for for us, and we, that'll continue into July for us too. I mean. I told my team, let's let's get away, get some vacation, and get recharged. But um, we'll still be working. We've got a retreat in d- July and looking toward next year. So, no, yeah. it was a busy night last night for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got uh, to get yourself set for next year. At the same time, you have to review what's just happened in this past year. You have to look yeah. ahead at the budget. And, and a big salute to the school board and to the business office and uh, and you and the rest of your staff uh, for putting together a budget and not knowing what the – state allocation is going to be a pretty good idea of what you're going to be getting from the state, but still you don't have the, the solid final number. Uh, and, and all of that has to go into the mix. Yes. Uh, well, you know, that's, I think the hardest part of the budget right now is, um, number one, like you said, Todd, we, we, the state budget, our budgets are due before the state budgets do. So we ne- we never really know that number. We anticipate we know it better this year than we have in the past, but we still don't know. So we have to conservatively, um, you know, put that into our income. You know, we still, we still have, you know, you've got an election year coming up. We don't know how that's going to affect, um, the ESSER funds have been used on specific uh, purposes and was designed for that. We tried to be true to that, and um, from, from mental health to, you know, um, credit recovery. I mean, we've got uh, we've got 100 and 140 kids signed up coming in at the end of July for summer camp um, and for programming and everything. So, I mean, we've got we got a, we got a lot of kids coming in this year, and that's all you know. That's all ESSER funded. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's always a challenge. Um, um, and no, we have a great business manager, Mrs. Romani, just does a great job. And um, our school board, you know, we're student first, but we uh, we have to be cognizant of the future. I mean, that's um, not only next year, but three years, five years, ten years down the, down the line. So, um, no, it's always a challenge every each and every year. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, I've had Darren Johnston and Philip Martell and uh, Michael Vukovic on the air here the last week or so as we've been talking about schools, and, and, and in particular school security. Uh, I know that uh, you're more than aware of exactly what happened down in, in, in Texas and uh, school shootings and school securities, and that has to concern you has to probably make you go back and say, are we doing everything right here at Purchase Line? Or do we have everything in a row? And are we following the procedures we need to follow? Because you're very, very much concerned with keeping the kids safe. No, that's that, just a terrible situation in Texas. And that, that's um, the one thing that keeps probably most of us up at night is, is just, are we doing enough? You know, are we doing enough? How can we get better? Um, how can we continue to to analyze? We we had we had getting security in last year. We consulted with them, and we looked at everything in our emergency operation plan from you know from our, our trainings to you know we we had them do a whole um, analysis of weaknesses in our and then we build off that list. Uh, this tomorrow actually we've got um, our threat assessment team going to back reviewing all of our procedures looking at our emergency operation plan and um, I constantly ask the question are we doing enough are you know are we doing enough from a um, personnel perspective are we doing enough from uh, making sure that our procedures that we have in place which I think are solid I think our plan is really good but I, I think coming out of Texas your plan is only as good as the as the, as the, as the people execute it and I think, how do we make sure that people are executing our, our procedures and um, and looking from a lockdown, from a perimeter lockdown, and then an interior lockdown, um, 
Um, I, you know, I've got my, my brother. My brother's a, a retired state policeman. He just he just um, got hired at a school district up north as their security. I pick his brain often, and mm-hmm. I say, you know, what, what are we doing? And and so um, constantly, Todd. It's 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 the it's the thing that um, never leaves my mind. Yeah, uh, and and it, it has to be that way. And as I was talking with Mr. Vukovic earlier this morning, we were talking about um, the the staff has to be on top of things right from the start. Uh, but the students have to be aware, and um, and and you always have to be cognizant of the fact that uh, in a scary situation like that, not everybody is going to be calm and cool and collected. Um, level headedness is is a wonderful quality to have, but it's not something that you can plan on. Uh, so you have to be adaptable and, and ready to react in any situation. And, and I and I always go back, and, and to get that and to achieve that, you've got to make sure you're doing enough training, you know. And you, you it's it's no. De- I, I'm an old sports coach, and the more you train, the more the more muscle memory you have in athletics. We have to continue to train. We have to continue to talk about this at each month at faculty meetings. We have to have our threat assessment team continue continually talking, and that way, and, and the students get comfortable. The teachers get comfortable with that. So. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. That's why you do those trainings. So in those situations, um, you can you can make those decisions. And even at, like you just said, uh, the, you just don't know how anyone's going to react. I wouldn't know how I would react in that situation. Um, I'd like to think that I, I have a pretty good base. Um, I grew up in law enforcement family. I like to think that I, you know, I, I'm I'm pretty good. Even when I go into restaurants now, I, I look around and I see the situational awareness around me. Mm. And it's a shame we we're in that in society like that. But that's that's where we're at, and so um, yeah, it's a it's a that's a, it, that's something that's constant, Todd. Constant. Sean so. Ford, the superintendent of the Purchase Line School District, with us this morning. So as we get to the end of this school year and look forward to the next, uh, you mentioned assessment of security. You assess the education that you're giving students at Purchase Line as well. Um, how'd you do? Uh, you're looking at things from this past year. Uh, where you where you thought the school district would be or should be? Um, you know, we've got, we've got, air, so I'm not, I'm going to speak generally here. We've got areas that, um, we did better than we thought we would do, and we have areas that we did worse than we thought we would do. Um, so what we're trying to do now is, is like you said, we, we assess those and say, okay, what do we need to do different? This, this, like we just talked about security, what do we need to do different that that's not working? You know, the, the, the definite, I always, I'm a big Jeff Foxworthy fan and, and, and Jeff Foxworthy says, you know, the definition of stupid is keep doing the same thing with the, with the expectation of a different result. And so, um, and, and, and I think Einstein said it a little bit different, but, um, you know, we try to say if they Things aren't working. We're not going to continue with that, and we need to change that. And so we're analyzing data. We get, we just get, we, we get we we have data, but we don't analyze Todd just test scores. You know, we want to look at our future ready. We want to look at career and college readiness, and where how are our kids graduating? I, I'm I'm fascinated to talk to recent graduates and say, what are we doing well? Where do we need to improve? And so we just don't want to be a district that looks at test scores. I think that's a one-day snapshot of how, how a child, and we need to look, be looking more at that. So we try to take a comprehensive look. Um, we have various data points that we look at. Um, but, again, we, we also look at the whole social-emotional. You know, how are we doing with that? How are we helping kids? Because in order for kids to function well in a classroom, they've got to be you know, we have to understand the, the trauma that some of them have been through and how are we addressing that because we're not going to learn until we deal with that first. So, you know, it's a pretty comprehensive approach that, that we look at for sure. And those habits, and they're formed in the elementary grades. I think sometimes we look so much at the finished product of a student in his junior or senior year uh, and uh, maybe we don't look enough as the public uh, at what's happening in the elementary grades. And that's where those good habits are formed. No, absolutely. You know, the research is really clear. It, you, you've got to do everything you can to get a child, you know, um, reading on level by third grade. You have to have advanced math skills by fifth grade, and, th- and those are the foundational skills that set, you, set your kids up for success. 
the whole way through. And if they're not there, then you're playing catch up. And so that's when you have to do you have to do your you know your enhancements, and that's when you have to do your you know recovery, and you have to do um, interventions and say how do we, how do we help a child get there? So um, now the foundation is definitely starts really in kindergarten, first grade second grade that's those are the foundational skills whether that be uh, the foundational reading skills or the foundational uh, math skills i mean the, those skills are uh, that's where they're formed right there so absolutely a lot to do in the month of june and maybe a bit of a breather in july but uh, then you're off and running for the month of august heading into the new school year sean ford thank you so much for spending some time with us thanks for this good academic year as well Oh, thanks, Todd. I, we, and I appreciate it and appreciate uh, you taking the time to interview all the educators. And, and, and it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure for us to do this. I know that. We all feel that way. So. Well, we appreciate it so much. Have a great summer. Yeah, you too, Todd. And take care. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And AM 1160.